Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're gonna get after the footboard first. Quite frankly, I think if I were to screw something up, these legs are a whole lot easier to make than those headboard legs. So I'm gonna use this as my test run. I created a template for what the arch looks like. And also off camera, I went ahead and milled those, the uh, styles, the upper and lower style to their final dimension. The bottom one gets a groove in the flat part, so that's easy. And then of course we cut the, the, the curve on the bottom. The upper one, however, gets the groove that goes through that curve. So that's gonna be just a little bit different. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. Um, but I'm gonna start by going ahead and cutting these rails to length. And we're gonna lay out for our dominoes. I'm gonna try for eight by fifties and I'm gonna try two in each joint, but that might be just too much domino in each one. So I'll, I might have to scale back um, to maybe only one per, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. Okay, so the dominoes are all in. I had to get a little creative with my clamping because I don't have a clamp long enough for this. And I'm just super happy with square. So we're gonna move on to getting our curves in it. My template fits a little snug, but that's okay. It's a good template. So all I'm gonna do is set that in there, line it up. And we'll, uh, and we'll get the curve in the bottom rail. Now I'll mark the top rail as well, um, but we're not gonna cut that one yet because we gotta get that groove in there to accept the top panel. So that's just easier to do while that's square than while it's tapered or while it's curved. So um, we'll go ahead and start cutting grooves next. And I'm gonna mark a big X where I need to cut grooves so I don't screw myself up. And the side with my lines, well those are my faces, so that's what I'll reference with the router when I do all the, the plunging. Okay, I've got my dual edge guide set up again. Um, as you know, one of my favorite setups for routing this kind of stuff. Uh, I have a half inch spiral bit in, uh, and I've marked a line for my half inch groove to go all the way down. It leaves me around a quarter of an inch setback and I'm set for about a quarter of an inch deep. Okay, I've dry assembled the legs in the, in the bottom rail so that I can get a mark for exactly where the groove goes on the legs because we'll have a panel that slides into the legs, but they have that arch in the top. So I'm gonna have to start building my panels to determine exactly where that arch goes. So I'm gonna start laying that out next, but I need these, these lines first. Okay, so I got it dry assembled again here so I could take a look. And these little corner cutouts that are in the design in here, they become a little bit tricky because you're really dealing with a couple of angles before you get into the tongue and groove. So, to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the panel first so that I can get in there and get a real reality check of, of what's going on. So we're gonna make the panel next and then we'll move forward with figuring out these cutouts.
Okay, so I trimmed the panel to 60 and a half inches wide. That gives me enough for the quarter inch groove on each side and I have not cut it to width yet. Um, I know what's going on on three sides. I'm not sure how those top arches are going to tie in. So to help me figure that out, I'm going to go ahead and cut what I do know. I'm going to cut the three sides and get my half inch tongue to go in those grooves in the legs and in that bottom panel. Um, I'm not going to cut the legs yet, but that will allow me to set this panel in there and get a good mark for, for what I need to figure out those top arches and then that top tongue to go in a top groove that has not been cut yet. Okay, so what I've done is I've used my template off of my known points and I moved my, my tongue in here. I moved it a half inch just so I had a little bit of playroom. And I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut out these corners and I'll, and I'll clean them up with a file. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll rabbit the tongue on the, the end of this. Now my panel is still about a quarter of an inch over width, but I'll go ahead and rabbit the whole thing and then trim it to fit after I get a groove in the footboard and then we'll put it all in place and hopefully it fits. So we shall see. Okay, so now that I've established where that cut line is, where it actually comes into the curve, now I'm going to establish that notch out and I'm just going to use my old wavy cutting board template because it has a nice radius to it that I like. And I'm just going to line that up three inches down and seven and a half inches over. Get it marked. And now I'll cut those corner cutouts. That will also give me the measurement that I need to stop for my dado in the legs. Okay, so now we're going to route that groove in the top rail. And just like we did before, only this time I've set up stop blocks to account for the arc in the panel. And we have to go much deeper this time. There it is set up on the footboard. So next up we'll uh, route the grooves in the legs and then hopefully get a good test fit on this whole panel. Okay, well there's the dry fit of the, the footboard. Um, I'm not going to film the actual glue up. I am going to use epoxy just for more open time. And that's going to be my clamping strategy because everything is in there just super nice right now. It's square. Um, but this is going to be a long glue up. So I'll show you on the other side. Okay, well there's the uh, footboard all wrapped up guys. So it's fresh out of clamps. I still got a lot of sanding to do and breaking the edges and whatnot. Um, and we'll get to that. But when we get going again, we're going to start on the lower section of the headboard. So stay tuned for that one. Until then, take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs>